Amen. How many thank God you're here tonight? Amen. We're just a few of us here tonight, but I thank God that we ain't by ourselves. Amen. Jesus is in the house. Amen. How many glad he's in the house? Amen. How many glad you come back tonight? Seems like Sunday was a long ways away, don't it? Amen. But I thank God, amen, for his presence being among us. I feel, I feel the spirit of God. I feel him in this place. Amen. I give him glory. Thank God for our first lady in our absence at the, at the moment. Amen. We give honor to her. Thank God for our minister, Keisha. Amen. Thank God for minister, Casey. Thank God for our usher and intercessor, Linda, being here. Amen. Brother Robert here. Amen. Just a few of us here tonight. Amen. And I'm praying for things to get back to Forest Church normal. Amen. But I thank God we got something. Well, I tell you, boy, I, everybody's church is different. As for my, I can't afford to have these doors closed. There's some people that won't make it back. Got to have that word going, fresh word. Amen. I thank God for me to be seated. Amen. The book of Acts. The book of Acts. God gave this to me in the middle of my sleep last night. I heard a word in, my, in, my, in between being a walk in the sleep. Amen. I thank God for what he gave me. And I know it's going to bless you. Amen. Acts chapter 16. Thank you, Lord. Acts 16, verse 25, down to 34. The Bible said, and at midnight, can y'all say midnight? midnight? Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Heard them at midnight. When everybody should have been sleeping. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the Doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul, but Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then came, then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and, all, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized. And he and all his, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced. Believing in God with all his house. Call your attention again to verse 26. That's 25 and 20, 25 and 26. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Now they're shaken again. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. I got a thought for you tonight entitled, God Clocked In on the Midnight Shift. <laughs> God Clocked In on the Midnight Shift. Oh, I love this. Brothers and sisters, Paul and Silas, 
like the persecuted apostles in Jerusalem, were joyful, rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus. Because sometimes serving the Lord is going to get you in some trouble. Oh, yes, it will. Paul and Silas was praying and singing praises unto God. The prisoners were listening. The Bible said the prisoners heard them. The prisoners listened with pleasure. As if listening to beautiful music. You know, you singing around 12 o'clock at midnight, I'm going to tell you to shut up. Oh, but something was going on in the prison. The Bible said they heard them and they were listening intently to what was being prayed and what was being sung. When Paul and Silas began to pray and sing, they opened the door for Jesus to clock in on the midnight shift. Did y'all just hear what I said? The praises and, and prayers opened the door for God to come into the prison. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The graveyard shift is a work shift running through the late hours of the evening to the early hours of the morning. Typically from midnight until 8 a.m. If you want God to clock into the midnight shift of your life, you have to open the doors of prayer and praise so that he can record his arrival to begin work. Oh, yes, y'all hear what I said? I think I better say it again. If you want God, to clock into the midnight shift of your life. You have to open the doors of prayer. And praise. So that he can record. His arrival to begin work. In other words. So he can punch in. You want God to punch in your life. That's something got to happen at midnight. That's something got to be said at midnight. That some songs got to be prayed at midnight. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Because God said I'm a God of a new day. I need a new day. I need a fresh hour. But I need you to open the door to let me in there. And you let me in through your praises and through your prayers. Quickly come with me to the book of Judges. The book of Judges chapter 16 and 3. If you can't find it, just listen to me. Judges 16 and 3. Oh, something about that midnight. Oh, thank you, Lord. It's a work God want to do. It's a shift. God want to come in on the midnight, man of God. And he want to turn some things around. Hallelujah. Verse, uh, um, Judges 16 and 3 says, And Samson lay till midnight, and arose at midnight, and took the doors of the gate of the city, and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them on his shoulders, and carried them upon the top of an hill that is before Hebron. I hear the Lord saying in my spirit, he said the time you most sleep is the time you most strongest. God said the midnight hours is the strongest because you are weak in your body but you're strong in your spirit. My God, he says some things you'll turn down when you start praying at midnight. It's some bars you better pick up in midnight. Y'all better hear me. It's some doors God will open for you when you begin to praise and sing at midnight. Come on, give God the praise in here. Oh, when the last time God clocked in? When the last time you opened up the door for him to come in and punch in the time card? By God to work a miracle in your life. Well, God said, I'm going to do it at midnight. Come on, lift your hands and give God the praise. Well, come with me to Psalms 119. Psalms 119. God, clock in on the midnight shift. I, I need God to come in, but I got to provide a way. Hallelujah. He got to hear something. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Psalms 119 and verse 62. It says, at midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee. Because of thy righteous judgments. 
Well, it was midnight that Paul and Silas rose up to give thanks unto God. Hallelujah. But nothing happened until they started praising. Nothing happened until they started singing songs unto the Lord. Boy, I come to tell somebody, if you want that house, you want the atmosphere of your house to change, get up in the midnight hours. Somebody got to get up and walk them floors. Start praising and singing. Un Hallelujah. Start calling on the name of Jesus. God said, you let me come in now. God said, now I'm going to come in your house and do some work. Because the moment you said hallelujah was the moment God punched in. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all, y'all. The moment you said thank you, Jesus, was the moment God said, I clocked in now. The moment your hands start lifting it up. My God, he started clocking in. When the time you start hollering, he started clocking in. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Look at Psalms 121 and 4. Psalms 121 and 4. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 121 and 4. The Bible says, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall never do what? Slumber nor sleep. He that keepeth Israel never slumber nor does he sleep. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. And says God never slumbers or sleep. He is always looking for someone to participate with him showing up in the midnight hours. My God, he's, I'm trying to find somebody to be, to be awoke with me. He said, I never slumber, nor do I sleep. So I work special favors with those that decide to get up at midnight and talk to me, said the Lord. My God, we work together, said the Lord. He said, I don't hang with those that sleep. I hang with those that's awake. My God, I hang with those that, see, I can't sing in my sleep. I can't pray in my sleep. But when I get myself up and say, wait a minute, I got to get down here and pray. God said, I've been waiting for somebody to talk to. This house, this house sure been quiet. <laughs> My God, I've been talking to myself. God said, but oh, look at Sister Linda. She got up to talk to me. Oh, I'm about to come down in that house and do some stuff. My God, watch this. Watch this because she's keeping me company. Glory, hallelujah. Minister Casey, the Lord said you're keeping them company. Minister Casey, Casey, you're keeping them company. Oh, Brother Robert, you're keeping them company. Every time you get up with him, you're opening that door for him to come in and say, oh, now, I got to clock in now. I got some work to do. My God, I got some work to do. Holy Ghost said to me, he said, it is time for a shift change in our lives. Because Satan has been fighting and attacking our bodies, attacking our health, attacking our minds. Satan has been on the clock working hard to keep our unsaved loved ones and friends bound and captured at his hands. But the moment we begin to sing and praise at midnight, the power of God will show up to work. And fire Satan on the spot. Oh, did y'all hear what I said? My God, have mercy. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say it again, my God. Oh, it's time for us to for a shift change. Because Satan has been fighting and attacking our bodies, our health, and our minds. Satan has been on the clock working hard to keep our unsaved loved ones and friends bound and captured at his hands. But the moment we begin to pray and sing praises to God at midnight, the power of God will show up to work and fire Satan on the spot. Brothers and sisters, God used Paul and Silas' prayers and praises as a means of convicting the hearts of the prisoners by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. that the prisoners stay woke with Paul and Silas at midnight because the sound and power that came out of Paul and Silas prayers and praises sent a revival in the prison 
Lord have mercy. These were hardcore prisoners. My God blocked up in prison with Paul and Silas. But when they began to pray and sing, my God, the power of God was released in that prison. And the first thing it got a hold of was the people. To make me tell you, when you're dealing with hardcore knuckleheads, I'm pretty, pretty sure Minister Casey can agree with you. In a prison, you better not be singing at nighttime and everybody trying to sleep. Come on now, that ain't that ain't normal. You sitting there praying loud and singing praises. Man, folks be cussing. Folks want to, my God, knock you out. But there's something about this praise and there's something about that prayer. Amen. That those those that were bound in prison, they could not deny the Bible. Said they heard them. They weren't heard. I mean, they listened intently. They was in tune with what they were saying because revival took place in the jailhouse. But notice revival did, did not take place till God made his way in the midnight show. My God, y'all better hear me. There's some things ain't going to change in our house. To God, make a change in the midnight shift. My God, some of the folks in our house don't want to hear no Jesus. They don't want to hear no songs. They don't want to hear no praises. But once Jesus come in, those very family members that told you to shut up, the very family members told you I don't want to hear that stuff it's going to be the main ones listening because it's not your might it's not by your power but it's going to be by his spirit that's going to draw them to what you're saying I come to tell you God clocked in on the midnight shift come on give God the praise for clocking in Lord have mercy my God and so the Bible says in verse 26 my God that wind blowing on me but the Bible said in verse 26 and suddenly there came a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's beds were loosed see brothers and sisters you would know what time Jesus has clocked in to do a job in your life because he shows up <laughs> to work with undeniable evidence. Oh, suddenly there was an earthquake and the foundations of the of the of the prison shook it. That was undeniable evidence that Jesus showed up on the scene. My God, immediately all the doors were open. You hear that? He said all the doors were open. All the doors was open. Immediately all the doors was open. Lord, listen to this. In ancient prisons, each door was secured by a bar. The earthquake, as it passed along the ground, probably forced the doorpost apart so that the bars fell to the ground. Oh, God came to that prison. He shook the foundation to the point. My God, until the bar, they blocked the door from opening and it came loose. Lord, have mercy. My God, I'm going to tell you, when God do a work in your life, when he do a work in your family, whatever Satan is doing in their lives, whatever bondage Satan got your family in, he's going to have to let them go after a while because a shaking is about to take place. My God, oh, he's about to shake your house, Sister Linda. He's about to shake your house, Minister. Casey. There's some folks for to get loose from the enemy's hand. Y'all better lift your hands and give God the praise. And so I want to come to tell somebody that there's nothing or nobody that is too bound up or too hard to be delivered. When the power of God is released through prayer and praise, I God is going to perform a miracle. I don't know about y'all, but I need a miracle. When God said, well, you got to come on and wake up and open that door for me to clock in. Yeah, in the midnight show. My God, can you lose an hour of sleep in the midnight? Just let me come in and do something. Uh, let me work a miracle for you. Let me work a miracle in your family. Watch this sometime when I come in your house. The blessing ain't just for you. It's going to be for some sinners. Oh, I'm going to use you to open some doors for some sinners. You're going to open a door of salvation for somebody that never knew about Jesus. Y'all come on, lift your hands in here. Oh, listen to this. Jesus did not, Jesus, hear me. Jesus did not open the prison doors and loosen the prisoners' bands to let them out. But Jesus opened the prison doors and loosened the prisoner bands to show them that Jesus has clocked in. 
Y'all pay me. <laughs> I'm not opening the door to let them out. I open the door to show them I got in. My God, you better hear me. My God, listen. I'm not letting you out of prison. I'm showing you I'm getting into the prison with you. My God, I'm showing you I open the door to get in. Ain't that something? He said, I opened it to get in. I broke your chains and your bands to loose you to see me. I opened the drawers for you to come out to see me. Oh, oh y'all hear me here. I let you out to see me. It's going to be some people that's bound in all kinds of stuff, but God going to let them out to see him. Lord have mercy. Bound in natural prison, but God going to get it, let them out to come see him. Y'all better lift your hands and give praise unto him. Lord, the sort of vicinity of that prison a man was 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 an in it. my God in a good way by the presence of God his presence showed up and everything changed my God when his presence showed up everything changed nothing remains the same when God's presence show up watch this nothing stayed tied up locked up bound up whenever God's presence show up <laughs> Y'all better hear what I said. Nothing remains the same, minister. When God's presence showed up, he said, I listen, I let them out not to go free, but I let them out to see me. I let them out to see something they never saw before. Oh, that's when I clocked in. As soon as God clocked in, that's immediately the, the jail cells begin, the, the foundation begin to shake, the, the doors begin to open, and the bands of men fell off. Come on, give God the praise in here. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And so, amen. We see here in verse 27 and 28. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open. You hearing this? He waking out of his sleep. He's seeing the prison doors open. He drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do, don't kill yourself. Don't do yourself no harm for we are all here. For we are what he say? For we are what? Don't do yourself no harm because we are who? For we, so they ain't talking about two. It's saying all, right? It ain't saying we both are here, but it's saying we all are here. So listen to me. Under Roman law, a guard who allowed the escape of a prisoner was generally put to death. Believing that all of the prisoners had escaped, the keeper of the prison assumed that death was certain for him. But I want to to listen to me. There are three questions that comes to my mind about this story. Verse 27 says, and the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep. Well, y'all hearing me. The keeper of the prison waking out of his sleep. And Paul said to the keeper, do yourself no harm for we all hurt. So the first thing I question is, how did the keeper of the jail sleep through all of the shaking? Of the foundation of the prison. I, I, I read, I was reading, and it caught my mind, my eye. He said he slept. He, the Bible said, My God, he, he, he was awaking out of his. How was he sleeping through all of that? The second question I, I, I have in this story is why didn't, why did not the prisoners escape after all the doors was open and their bands were loose? The third question I have to ask in, in this story is why didn't the prisoners escape after they saw that the jailer was sleeping? Well, to the, to the point of how was he sleeping? through all of the shaking and through all the bands being felt. Now the Bible doesn't say why the jailer was sleeping. But in my opinion, I believe that the jailer was slain by the power of God that was in the prison. Hallelujah. He was slain. Y'all quiet. I believe the power of God was slain him. He didn't hit his head. I, I don't believe nothing fell on his head. Because the Bible said they came out and there was no harm to none of them. It was all well. He said we are all here. No harm, no scratch, no perk, no nothing came upon them. I just simply believe that the jello was slain in the spirit. I believe that the jello was sleeping while Paul and Silas was praying. Because the Bible 
Bible mentioned them singing and praising and that only the prisoners the prisoners heard them praying and singing and praising and not the jello it, it didn't say the jello heard them y'all got quiet it just said the prisoners heard them and I believe if the jello was aware he would have told them to be quiet because he had to bring order in the house but I believe while they were singing and praying a man if he was out I believe while the prisoners was hearing them sing praises to God, my God, and praying the prayer, just praying unto God, the jailer was out, my God, by the power of God. And so when the power of God entered the prison, roles reversed. Watch this. Instead of the jailer being woke at midnight and the prisoners asleep, the prisoners was awake while the jailer was asleep. Oh God, I'm not saying he was out. Hallelujah. Something knocked him out. Glory. Hallelujah. And the reason why the prisoners did not sleep at midnight, the reason why the prisoners did not run and escape after the doors was open and their beds was loosed, I believe the Holy Ghost got a hold of their hearts to what they saw. I believe that through the through the demonstration of the power of God, they decided to follow Paul and Silas in the prison instead of following the escape way to freedom. Lord, because the doors was open for them to go. But it was something about Paul and Silas. That's why he said we are all are here. Nobody escaped. Nobody ran out. But the Holy Ghost got a heart, a hold of that heart, which got a hold of them legs. My God directed their patch. They became good men at that time. Because a good man weighs his steps. Is ordered by the Lord. I believe God changed them. I believe God sanctified them. Because God punched him at midnight and changed that heart. Y'all better now, boys, from the class. I shouldn't be talking like this. Ah, but he came in and heard that child cell. By God, it changed that heart. Because what, what criminal, what, 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 amen, what, what, what anybody, any prisoner want to do? Stand bound in a jail. Here it is, your bands are broken. Here it is, the boss is loose. Here it is, the jailer is asleep. And you got a way to get out. Oh, but it's something about the Holy Ghost. It'll strip you of your freedom. My God, when you really get saved for real, you ain't going to be loose. You're not going to go where you want to go. You're going to follow holy men. My God, look on us. That's why he said, look on us. We have no money for you. Look on us. Because when God truly saves you, you're going to find some Holy Ghost filled men that you can follow. Y'all better hear what I'm saying, God. Have mercy, hallelujah. They had a chance to get away. But revival took place up in the jail cell. You can't tell me that you're saved. And you got all this freedom out here to do what you want to do. And you out there doing it. My God, how do you say you're saved? And you're doing what you want to do. How can you say you're saved? Yes, you could do what you want to do. But you don't have a right to do it. My God, you can do it. But God did not give you the right. They could, they could have escaped. But they still didn't have the right. And I want y'all to understand this God is a God of order. He didn't come into the jail cell to break the rules. Notice nobody escaped. God have mercy, Lord. Even though the natural walls have fallen, God still has divine walls up. My God, his divine order was still working. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. God ain't gonna let no prisoner escape. My God, God ain't gonna let no prisoner, amen, go out there. My God, and run, amen, from a law that he made it set in motion. Lord, my God, better hear what I'm saying. You, you ain't gonna just run and do what you wanna do and not pay the time and for the crime that you've done. He said, look, I didn't come to get you out the crime of your natural life, but I come to search to, to save you and to show you that I die for your sins. Even though you're bound in prison you still can be free and y'all better hear what I'm saying and so listen so they had they had the way man of God they had a way out to go out into the street but the Holy Ghost compelled them 
that's how I know the Holy Ghost is real. Because when you want to go right, it's something inside you. Make you want to go left. I, I'm pretty sure they thought about it. Wait a minute. All that earth, all that wall is gone. Oh, but there's something inside of me. I can't leave these men of God. Hallelujah. It's something that they said. That's praise that they sung. My God brought me to my knees. The prayers that they prayed made tears come to my eyes. Why? Because God clocked in on the midnight shift. Come on, give God the praise in here. Yeah, I want y'all to hear this well. I, I didn't have a lot of time for, for this, but I, I begin to hear God tell me. The Lord said to me as I read the story, God said Paul and Silas was not praying and singing praises for God to get them out of prison. Because you know the songs, Paul and Silas prayed and sung praises to get them out because they had no man to pay their bill. They was not praying to get out. You never heard that? They had no man to pay their bill. Y'all never some older saints heard it. They say they had nobody to get them out. So they begin to sing and praise. And they praise. It's what got them out. Let me tell you, they wasn't praising to get out of prison. Uh-oh. See, that break a lot of people's down. Oh, they praising. Let me out of here. Now, they, first of all, they was praising. Let me tell you why they was praising. They was praising because they was worthy to suffer for his name's sake. That's what he said when you're persecuted for my name's sake. Rejoice, my God, that you're kind of worthy to suffer for me. That's why they was praising. Yeah. They wasn't praising for God. Oh, please. Oh, I know you're able to give me it. No, it wasn't that kind of singing and praise. Because let me tell you something. If they was praying and praising for God to get them out, it was just for them. If it was just for them, then the prisoners that heard them would not have been affected by what they were saying. Oh, y'all got quiet. If, if I was just singing, Lord, make me over, Lord, make me over, how, what benefit would that give to them? My God, but I don't know what they were singing. I don't know what they was praying, but I know they wasn't praying for God to get them out. Y'all better hear me. But watch this. Lord, have mercy. But the Holy Ghost moved upon them to pray and sing praises at midnight so that his saving power would be released into the prison. So they weren't praying for God to get them out. They was praying for God to come on in. Y'all come on. What good, Lord? Remember, Paul is in. He's in Philippi. He was sent as a man. He saw a man in a vision say, Paul, come over to Macedonia and help us out. Amen. He went to Macedonia. And the first person that he helped was a lady named Lydia. My God. And then the second person he helped was the girl of divination. They was on a mission. They weren't praying for God to get them out the mission. If they were praying for God to get them out the jail, they would be praying for God to cancel the vision that he saw. Y'all got quiet. Lord, he be saying, God give me, Lord, I don't want this. I cancel this vision. Lord, cancel this purpose. So they could not have been praying for God to get them out. But when they begin to pray and sing praises to God, God said, I'm not getting you out, but I'm coming in there with you. Because we got work to do. Because you up at midnight and I never stumble asleep. So we got some work to do together. <laughs> Y'all better hear God. And so brothers and sisters, when God clocked in on the midnight shift in the prison, he punched in to save the jailer and his family. That's the whole reason. Why would he pray, get me out? But the jailer have not yet been saved. Why would they be praising for God's power? See, for years we've been taught, we ain't praise God. And because they praise God, God got them out. No, they, if you look at the story correctly, they weren't praising for God to get them out. They were praising, hallelujah, because they know their time in Macedonia, Philippi, wasn't done yet. How do you know it wasn't done? Because I'm locked in this jail. He wouldn't send me on a mission to lock me down like this. I, there's got to be something God I fear there's got to be something in this jail that you want to do Oh, y'all better. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. And so verse 29. Oh, y'all understand what I'm saying. So, so verse 29 said, then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. So the jailer, alarmed at the earthquake, amazed that the prisoners were still there, confounded at the calmness of Paul. 
Paul and Silas and overwhelmed at the proof of the presence of God. The jailer trembled at the presence of God. You hear what the Bible said here? He, he, he sprang the light and came trembling. Hallelujah. Trembling in verse. My God, what verse is that? My God, verse 29. He came in trembling. What was he trembling? Yes, I believe he was trembling a little bit or a lot because of the earthquake where he was probably knocked out. And when he woke up, he saw all that stuff happening. He was trembling at the doors being opened. He was trembling because of Paul and Silas' calmness. My God, he was trembling at the overwhelming proof of God's presence. That's why he trembled. He trembled at the power of God. Why did he tremble? Because I know the power of God was so thick in that place. Because you had two men that was locked in jail. Oh uh, my God, undeservedly. You had all of these prisoners hanging around. And we are still here. He trembled to see all them doors open but nobody escaped. And most of all his eyes was opened up to me. There is a God. And he trembled at the presence of God. Because I read in Jeremiah 5 and 22. Fear you not me, said the Lord. Would not you tremble at my presence? He he trembled at the presence of God. The spirit of salvation and deliverance was in the jail. And that's how you know you got a revival in your church. When sinners can come to the altar and tremble at what they just saw. I feel like preaching now. They begin to tremble at what they see. They trembled at the signs, the miracles, the wonders, the why. My God, they trembled. And I believe this generation can preach anything. They can say anything behind the pulpit because they lost their tremble at God's presence. They don't feel God anymore. That's why, therefore, if the preachers don't feel God, then the people won't feel God. It won't be a tremble in their spirit if there's no tremble in the preacher. Oh, wait a minute. He said, for, for you, fear ye not me, said the Lord. Will you not tremble at my presence? Wait a minute. I believe in my mind that the jailer was not the only one trembling in the presence of the Lord. I believe that Paul and Silas, as they pray and sing, sing praises, there was a tremble in their spirit because the presence of God showed up. What made the, what made the prisoners listen? It wasn't Paul and Silas good singing. It was the presence of God that brought a trembling God up in the house. He said you tremble. Watch this. Tremble at my presence. The presence was so strong until the foundations trembled and it's shaking at the presence of God. That's what caused the earthquake. It was the presence. It was the earthquake that trembled at the the birth under the jail trembled at the presence of God. <laughs> oh, when this presence show up, some gonna have to shake. My God, that was a shaking on the earth. That was a shaking on under the prison, which is the earth. A shaking under the foundation of the prison, and a shaking upon the people that was in the prison. And I hear God say, "What good is me shaking the earth and not shaking you? And you came from it. I got Lord have mercy. I got to shake where you came from. I got to shake it. I shook you when I spoke, and you came to be. Oh, when my presence show up." A shaking. When he clocked in, a shaking. A tremble. Paul and Silas trembled. The jealous trembled. That's why they couldn't say nothing. That's why they couldn't say shut up. Because there's too much presence. Too much God's presence in the house. Nobody couldn't fight because there was too much presence in the house. Watch this. The jailer couldn't shut him up because he trembled to the point. I feel like he was still trembling. He trembled and fell out, woke up trembling. My God, the power of God knocked him out, went through the trembling, got up still trembling. My God didn't know what to do. They couldn't run at the door. There was a trembling. God's spirit made them tremble. God's spirit made them shake. Oh, when God clock in on the midnight hours, huh? clock in on the midnight shift, huh? I promise you a trembling huh? is going to come in the atmosphere. Huh? Somebody better lift your hands out there and give God some real praise. Up in here. Oh, 
tremble. At his presence. I'm waiting for the church to get back to that place. Where God's spirit show up to a point. All flesh have died. Flesh have died to their own agendas. Where God showed up. Notice, watch this. As I read this story. As I read the power of God in it. It takes my mind out of the prison. And puts my mind on revival. No, notice this is a prison. But look at what's happening in a prison. This does not normally happen in a prison. God shut down the jailer and Jesus became the jailer. By God have mercy, he prayed the rule. Hallelujah. He set the order. Lord, I can't hear nobody here. He had the key and let him out. That's the jailer. He can let you in, let you out. He can tie your bands on and let them go. He let the bands, he took the key, took the bands off, opened the door with the key, let them out and said, follow me. Don't go right or left, follow me. That's what the jailer say, do. My God, let me pat you down and you go straight to your seat where they had order with him did they? They didn't run, but they stayed right there. There was a new jailer in the house. They made this rock God. Make this a real jailhouse a rock. My God have mercy. It was a rocking in the jail. This what happened. When he clocked in. He made himself available. He said, let me put this on record. Because you know when you clock in on your job, it goes on record. It was, bro, you, minister, you, my brother Ken, Casey, you were late. I see on the documents you was late five minutes. It documented, amen, that you clocked in. Well, the documents that he clocked in, look at the shaking. Look at the bands fell. Look at the look at the doors being open. Look at the prisoner didn't escape. Look at this jello begin to tremble. Look at God knocked him out. I believe God knocked him out. My God, the trembling knocked him out. He didn't even know they escaped. Hallelujah. Because he was out by the power of God. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. I don't know who else was in that prison. But I don't read no, nothing else about nobody else in that story. But I'm pretty sure they was knocked out. They couldn't even tell the story. That's why God didn't probably even put them in the book. But for those that had an experience of the trembling of God was recorded in the book. So the mighty acts of God brought the jailer to his knees. He finally knew he needed God's salvation. That's the whole purpose of God getting in the jail. They weren't praying and singing praises to get out. They were singing praises and praying to God for God to come in. That's why we people reduce this story to just praise getting you out. Yes, it will. But but right here. Because he inhabit the praises of his people. So if he inhabit the praises, I bring him on. When I begin to praise, he's in it. And when he's in it, he stepped out of it. He stepped out the praises. Oh, stepped out. And the prayer released my power. So when I stepped out, power was released with me. Ha! Ah, glory, hallelujah. Something began to happen. Sometimes we got to stop praising for God to get us out of stuff. I'm praising for you to come on in it. Come on in it, God. Because I know if you come on in it, you can work something in me. I know you can work something to live. Come on in it. I'm praising you for you to release your power while I'm in it. While I'm going through the fire and the furnace of affliction. I'm not asking you to get me out. I'm asking you to come on in here with me. Come on in here with me. Because I know if you're coming here with me, you can help me to complete my purpose. Because there's a purpose for this affliction. There's a purpose for this pain. And I believe some of our pain and our affliction is for us, to, for God to get the glory out of our lives. To reach other people that's bound by Satan. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Sometimes you might be going through a situation you can't get out of. God said, okay, stop complaining about it. Start praying and praising and talking to me and let me come in it, hallelujah, and watch me open doors beyond your wildest dreams. And so the jailer and his family placed their trust in God and immediately expressed that faith 
by being baptized. Huh? By being baptized. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and all that was in his house. Verse 33 said, and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. Look, see, ain't no jailer have no business doing this. But, 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 but when God show up, he break the rules. I need God to break some rules. <laughs> see, so when God break the rules, you can't call it manipulation. <laughs> when God break the rules, you can't call it unfair. Who could, who, who, who said, could say God's ways is unfair? Oh, he said, uh, after all this, because he, he knew they, they was beaten before they were thrown into this prison. And the Bible said he took, the, he took them the same hour. All this happened in one hour. God moved like this within one hour. It don't take God long. When God clock in your life, when God touch in and get on record, he come to work and he want to do a quick work. He going to make your enemies your footstool. My God, he going to make those that's been over you to be under you. He going to make your enemies at peace with you after a while. Oh God, the jealous was the enemy, but after a while he became their friend because he began to wipe their stripe. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Oh, that's what happened when the trembling of the Lord show up. He took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized. He and all his, all his, all of his household straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he said, meet before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. So my question to you is, when did God clock out? I believe he clocked out in verse 33 after he was baptized. Because notice, look at verse 34. And when he had brought them to his house. In other words, they left the jail. And then you come into my house. From the jail to the house. God said, yeah. I did what I had to do in the jail. I'm done. Prisoners, go back to your cell. Bands, be locked back down. Jella, you still got your job. Huh? He put it all the way back. He put everything back in place. No prisoner got free before their time. The Jella didn't even lose his life. But he got saved. After that, it's all over. He was baptized. God said, I'm done now. I'm done in that jail. I baptized his whole family too. All of them. He didn't, watch this. He just, now watch this. Lord, he went to Macedonia, they went to Macedonia for reasons. Huh? Verse 9 said, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man in Macedonia and prayed him saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. So there was a vision. Macedonia, Philippi, come over. come over. What was the purpose of the vision? To go to Lydia's house. Then, free the girl of divination. Also, I need you to go to prison. You get lied on because you but they're teaching stuff that we Romans ain't used to hearing. It, it, was, it, all, it all lined up. They was beaten. Thrown in jail. All lined up. Okay, they went to Macedonia to reach some prisoners. God, prisoners heard them. Prisoners followed them in the prison. Notice, they couldn't go, they couldn't follow him nowhere else but in the prison because they was bound to the prison. God never freed them to follow Paul on the streets. Because they was bound because of crime in the jail. So if you can't follow him on the street, follow him in the jail. Come with me. And so he was there to, to, to show a demonstration to the, to the prisoners. He was there. They was there to get this jailer saved. They was there to get his family saved. And God said, I'm done. I clocked out. When have 
Lord, my question to you is not have you allowed God to clock in, but when have he clocked out? Because if I, if I can't tell you anything of him clocking out, then ain't got no story. I can't tell you God brought me through this, and at the end of it, I came out. That's when he clocked out. Y'all hear me? The Bible said, <laughs> boy, I tell you, it's good. And he brought them into his house. He said, meet before them and rejoiced, <laughs> believing in God with all his house. Mm. Let's keep reading. And when it was day, the magistrate sent the sergeant saying, let these, those men go. Now, I, wait a minute. So I don't know if this jealous house was in the jail. I don't know. Because the Bible said took him to his house. Right. But then you, you read here in verse 35, and when it was day, the magistrate sent the sergeant saying, let those men go. I wonder what, what happened between. <laughs> Who knows if he took them home and brought them back? So the next day, <laughs> when it was, whoa, wait a minute, y'all, y'all, look at y'all, detail, look at detail. Watch this. And when it was day, because midnight just passed. <laughs> it was dark outside. God said, I done some work when everybody was asleep. Now, daytime, everybody woke. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the sergeants saying, let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told this to Paul. The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now, therefore, depart and go in peace. Y'all hear that? <laughs> in other words, I was already free before y'all told me I was. I've already made a way. God said, I've already made a way for you. Before they told you, the way was made. See, if they told you, Sister Linda, we approve you of the loan, God already said it. They just, they just echoing what God said. If they told you, Sister, I'm giving you the house, they just echoing what God has already said. Why? Because God already took me to the carpet. Like, how, Pastor, in my vision, in my spirit, I was already there, and he told me it's yours. You just echoing what I saw. But Paul said unto them, they have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now they thus, they thrust us out privately? No. Verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. See, you, 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 when, you, when you got God on your side, you can be bold. They beat us and put us here uh, unrighteously, and they telling us to secretly, you can let us go. No, tell them to come tell us to our face. God. And the sergeant told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and besought them and brought them out and desired them to depart out of the city. God was done. He was done with them. And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. Wait a minute. And when they had seen the brother, they comforted them and departed. Watch this. They went out of the prison, but they didn't leave the city. Because they went back to Lydia's house because Lydia asked them to stay with her. Y'all better, better hear me. When God got a mission for you, listen, I don't care what happens. Obstacles, you're going through obstacles, you're going through all kinds of stuff. But God said, I'm, gonna come, I'm, gonna, I'm going to come get you out. I'm going to show you miracles and favors during this mission. God clocked in. Now we see him clocked out. How do you know? The pavement. I, I see, I see, how you say, when you clock in, you can see on the computer what time you clocked in and clocked out. You can see it, right? Well, the time punch is here. I seen when he clocked in, and I seen when he clocked out. Come on, give God some praise. Oh, right now, he's on the scene. He's going to do some stuff for you. He's working right now. My God. And listen, don't let your praises and, and your prayers become selfish. Father, come on in. Come on in, Jesus. 
Come on, do what you want. Oh, do what you want to do. My God, do what you want to do. Hallelujah. When folks start telling you they praise to get out, they lying to you. Because they be praying to get out of it. They'll be praying to get out of Macedonia when the vision say, come help us. Well, it's like somebody called me out to preach. And when I get out there, I'm praying that God give me, Lord, please take me home. I got a, I got a purpose to do. Lord, I'm ready to go home. But you ain't preached yet. Lord, get me out of here. My, my mission, I'm going to abort my mission. Because I was called there. Boy, look at that. Had they not went there. Had they not went to Macedonia. Lydia wouldn't have got saved. The girl with divination would not have been delivered. If they wouldn't have went, the guard, the jailer wouldn't have been saved. Neither the prisoners have saw the goodness of God, nor the jailer family would not have been saved. It all had to work together. Give God some praise. We thank God for you. Amen.